Hip hop has its first billionaire, but what does that even mean? BET's Black Coffee starts now. Good morning, everybody. How y'all feeling? This is BET's Black Coffee. I'm Mark Lamont Hill with my folks, Gia Peppers and Jameer Pond. Woof, woof. Make sure you send us your comments and questions using the hashtag Black Coffee right now. That way we can hear what you have to say throughout the whole show. Let's get it started, all right? Because yes. yesterday we got the announcement from Forbes that Jay-Z has reached official billionaire status. That, oh. They said it's based on a conservative estimate huh. of his holdings. Meaning, it's not like right, he's not like right at a billion. It's probably like 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. Right. He's amazing. probably been sitting on a billion for a bit, and we just didn't know. And he, they went to San Tropez and got on a boat and celebrated and just came back and <laughs> yeah. didn't that, even care. To that tell might us. be true. But the first thought I had though was like, what happened to Dre? Dr. He beat Dre. him. No, but they said Dre was the first couple billionaire a couple years ago. Remember when he sold the beat? Yeah. But he was but a little was, short, right? It was right. shorter, yeah. It wasn't quite there. I think Jay-Z is the first official, official billionaire with yeah. all, he's, I mean, the man divers, diversified his brand, like, starting decades ago. Like, he was one of the first rappers among the Diddy's, among all the Master P's, to make sure that, like, not only did he touch, he had something in liquor brands, he had something in music. Rock Nation has music and sports, and then title. Like, the man has been working several channels. Yeah, do say, all that do stuff. Say, yeah. Basically, that whole verse on Meek's album, you know what I mean? Official. He's breaking down his holding. And Thank it was you. definitely a billion dollar verse. Oh, that verse was vicious. To, to, you know, put a nice big roll around a billion dollar career. I mean, look. I am excited because Jay is probably my favorite rapper. Okay. Definitely top five of all time. Always. If you even want to debate, I get it. But like to see where he's come from, the hustle, the game, the jewels that he has dropped to get to a billion, I'm proud. Yeah. <sighs> And we what? won't acknowledge, <laughs> we won't acknowledge <laughs> the blueprint <laughs> three, okay? Well, that's a different All conversation. Right, yeah, that different is time. a different, like, do you yeah. Do have time for this? No, nah, I'm Jameer has bad taste in, in Jay-Z albums. But no, that's not I true. Have a, I have a different issue uh -huh. today, on today. Oh, okay, okay Pastor. It's, come on, Lamont. <laughs> I should have never told you that. I hate when people call me Lamont. <laughs> now you know the world, the world is going to call you that now. Look, it, I'm, I'm conflicted, right? Okay. Yeah. On the one hand, Jay-Z, is uh, a hero of mine. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing artist, one of my favorite rappers, certainly in my top five, top three, whatever, mm -hmm. right? And on most days, top one. Mm -hmm. um, and I admire the fact that he is self-made, like really self-made. Well, mm -hmm. They tried to say Kylie Jenner a couple months ago was a self-made billionaire. How you self-made when you got family, you got resources, yeah. you would have got inherited wealth, you didn't make anything, right? Then I'm looking at Jay-Z, Marcy Projects. Well, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Coming from nothing, coming from the dirt, being able to, being able to struggle, sacrifice, um, come up with ideas, being told no, and keep pushing. Mm -hmm. My favorite quote of his, he said, what do you say, our the, the, big, the most genius thing we did was- Just Never give up. Never give yeah. up. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. That's, that, if, if you want to buy into the American narrative of success, it's Jay-Z, it ain't Kylie Jenner. Right. right. But it's still a billion dollars, and I can't, how can I put it? Nobody needs a billion dollars. And so I'm proud of his achievement. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live in a world where people have a billion dollars. Hmm. I, I want to live in a world where people have stuff. Like, a billion dollars means a whole lot of people don't have something. $10 billion, like Bezos, means a whole lot of people don't have stuff. Yeah. And what you have to do to get a billion dollars often me leads, uh, definitely leads to suffering. Now, Jay-Z is the most philanthropic of any billionaire I've ever I met. Just, yeah, I was just about to say, yeah. yeah you know, he, okay, he's as good a billionaire as you can be. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, but that's still a, a huge, like, asterisk on it for me. Right, but imagine in the life that they're living in, right? Now they have these, this huge compound in California. Mm -hmm. They are in these meetings where the people that they are working with and, and getting money from are these billionaires, are these people who come from long money. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, I'm just as powerful, if not more powerful, influential than you, than, uh, or influential than you. Why are you getting paid more than me? At the same time, they have absolutely earned and they are worth, especially when you look at the landscape of how much money is actually out here, mm -hmm. why should they take less because that other people have less? You like, like yeah, when, you. when you look at the playing field, they should absolutely, in the way that you they're You say, why should they take less? Why should they people? take less, I, I hear less that. In, that, in that landscape? And mm -hmm. then also, I like to give a benefit of the doubt to Jay that he's actually doing something constructive with his money. Jay's not like the braggadocious type, like, I'm a put money in, you know, back in the black schools or donate money to countries in Africa. Like, we don't know what he's doing. We know that he's uh, very skilled in, like, real estate and business ventures. Um, 
I would like to give the benefit of the doubt that he's actually doing something good with his money. I think he's doing great stuff with yeah. it. Yeah. I think he's doing great stuff with it. The 25 richest people in America have more money than, like, the poorest 156 million people. Right. Yes. Right. So I'm saying no matter what you're doing with your money, mm -hmm. and there are worse examples. Bezos, who owns Amazon, yeah. I mean, there's years where he gave, like, $2 million. Right, <laughs> right. Out exactly. of $10 billion. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, again, they doing the... I, I, I love what they did in Ferguson. I love what Jay-Z mm -hmm. did with Black Lives Matter. The I love justice reform uh, coalition that he has. Great work. Right, like, he really gets people yeah, like, out of jail. He's done, he's Amazing. Done yeah. it's, a, it's not a knock against him for me. It's a knock. It's just the idea that... The idea that anybody should have that much wealth mm -hmm. is dangerous. In to me. general, like if you had a half a million, half a billion, what, what, what would you be a failure, right? But yeah. the, but imagine if that half a billion went somewhere else. That's not Jay Z's fault. It's, it's a problem with the system. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. I don't want to make Jay Z the, the 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 target of it and ignore all these white men that have a lot more, come on, the right. same amount who, who don't do anything with it. So it's not about Jay Z. It's just I can only get for so hype for somebody having a billion dollars. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it's, it's like if your uncle becomes like chief of the police department. Like you proud that he worked hard and made it to the top. But he chief of the police but department. Chief of the police department. But in 15 years, say you have accumulated enough wealth that you are now a billionaire. BET, are you listening to this? <laughs> yeah, listen <laughs> close. You're you gonna shame Stop. yourself? A billionaire? Would you be? Would you be ashamed to look in the mirror? Yeah. Like, would give it do back. you? You would give. You would give a billion dollars back. Yes. Okay. Not all of it, but I, I'd give. I give a significant amount of it back, right. and that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people yeah. give away. I mean, there are people who literally say a billion dollars is too much to have. I'm gonna give 750 million of it away. It's, so how, how much yeah, how much is, is enough, to enough to keep for you? What what would you say is something that's acceptable to have then? That's a fair question, and I would have to think it through. I don't yeah. know the exact answer. Yeah, think that um, through. I think, but 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 I think <laughs> if I had a hundred million dollars, yeah, okay, I think I'd be just fine. Yeah. If you have more money than you can spend in a lifetime in your children's lifetimes, then you probably have too much. And that's what I'm saying. You as as we know, Jay Z came from zero, like nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think for him, it's also I want to make sure that my kids never my Kids, 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 kids. Generational never, ever wealth. Have Generational. To touch but a million. Yeah. But we, you got to understand the playing field that we're on in America in mm -hmm. general. There's long money created on our backs from like slavery. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, yeah. he's running in these rooms with these same people. And I yeah. think that eventually you're like, well, if I can accumulate that, why not? Why, why can't yeah. I? And now this is opening up the doors and the dreams and the perspectives of so many black kids mm. who are from the projects that they can actually accumulate that same amount but of But they can't. But they can't. But, they, <laughs> but, but, they they can't. but, here, but here's the thing. The, 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 like, who, how many people can get a billion dollars, right? Right, it's, it's right. hard, but it's not impossible. Jay Z sure. is tangible proof of that. We got, we have, we need people as representatives to be in there. We don't have a lot of black billionaires, right? So the more that we have, I think the more uh, generational wealth we can attain. Like it's a system. Like we we've seen it happen. It can happen, but we need those people to walk in those doors first. Well, four four four. He said, "What's better than one billionaire? Two. Two. I'd say it's better to have 20, 50, 000 people who made a living wage." All right. That's all I'm saying. But, Mark you know, Monson. we got somebody writing in who's probably going to cuss me out. Gerald is on YouTube. His name is Gerald Tishabelezzo Mobing Nothing But okay. Excellence, he says. Right. I think that's his name, though. Nothing But Excellence. Nothing But Excellence. I'm only 19 and a first year student from South Africa. And after hearing this, it motivated me to a whole new level. Truly one of the greats and one of my heroes. Much respect. Yes. Exactly. I think that is a feather in your hats. Yeah. Yes, it's Never. just, that's it. I think that people can't be what they can't see. And at the end of the day, even if you never, never, ever get to a billion dollars, you can still reach for the moon and land among the stars. There might be more millionaires out here because they've seen Jay-Z be a billionaire. And that's uh, all I'm true. saying. Now, and I get it. Maybe he could do more. And Jay-Z, I not about Jay -Z absolutely doing more. need help. I just want everybody to have something. That's all. And, and, that's, and that's fair. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that people are buzzing about is uh, Ava DuVernay's yeah. miniseries Ooh. on Netflix, When They See Us, uh, the story about the Central Park Five. <sighs> Did y'all get a chance to like look at it a little bit? Or I watched it. You watched it? Woo. I What'd couldn't you think? finish it, I'm not gonna hold yeah. you. I wasn't a lot of people felt like that. It's hard to watch. It's traumatic. And mentally, because I, I mean, we obviously know what happens. Um, and you got, and I, I watched the first two parts, and, and, two, and I got through two and a half before I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna take a break. Mm -hmm. um, but Ava DuVernay is just powerful She's and masterful. brilliant. Yeah. And, and, and the way that, one of my favorite scenes was after they found out they were guilty in the, uh, I think it was Kevin who was playing Kevin the White. trumpet. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Super the middle Kevin. of the block. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. the, thank God that she is the person that told the story through yeah. those eyes. Because it, not that it made the story any less 
har harrowing and, and terrible, but seeing it through an artist's per perspective yeah. helped me digest mm -hmm. it a little bit. And somebody better. who loves black people. Yes. Yeah. You know, you that was tell that, that was, yeah, conveyed. And I've always seen that horror. I mean, from Middle of Nowhere, the first film, mm -hmm. up until now. 13. 13. 13, the documentary. All brilliant and beautiful, right? Yeah. But, but she loves black people so much, and she told this story in a way that showed our humanity. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and what it means to struggle. Because a lot of people could be like, well, why did those kids confess? You know what I mean? Or just, you know, throw people, throw those parents away who, you, who maybe didn't do enough in their minds, although right. I disagree. You know, it, this is a beautiful story to tell, a beautifully painful story to tell. Right. Yeah. Um, and she did it with, with great artistic vision, mm -hmm. um, but she also had an indictment of the system. Yeah. Yeah. That, that meant everything to me. And I think it's a testament to the actors as well who kind of embody yes. All the these Emmy kids Oscars. and yes. these adults that they grew into. I mean, the the, the young kid from Moonlight, uh, Jarrell Jerome, yeah. if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, yes. played both roles for Corey Wise. And I haven't seen pain like that conveyed in a way oh, of painting a child and a man. Yeah. Ever. Like he was amazing. When you see that fourth episode in that miniseries, and strictly about Corey Wise being in Rikers and being charged as an adult at 16 years yeah. old yeah. after being forced to make a confession. When he I, only went. When he only went for his mans. He only went for Yusef. I quote a great philosopher. Mm -hmm. You ain't getting bags, stay the F from police. Yes. Christopher Wallace. Yes. That's why you don't walk in the police station. I'm not blaming him. Yeah. But but that's why because there's no there's no reason to trust that the system will do you right. They went in with good faith that like mm -hmm. if I if I'm telling the truth I'll be fine. I'll be good. That assumes that they operate in good faith and right. those prosecutors didn't. The system didn't. And because there's such bloodlust when when a white woman is harmed, uh -huh. it's like somebody got to go to jail for this. Man. I don't care who it is. Somebody got to go to jail yeah. for this. And that's what made me. Hate the character, not the woman. Don't sue me. The woman right. of the prosecutor, because she on the sue. She's trying to sue <laughs> folk right now. Body. Linda Fairstein, who handled the, who, and oversaw the case, she's been the person um, now upset at how she's being represented. People are saying her books. She should be giving her book royalties away. Yes. Mm -hmm. People are saying that she should be like fired from whatever job she has. She's been being booed at potentially at a nonprofit that she worked for mm -hmm. because people are saying, look at what you did. Look yeah. at what you did. This is you. Knowingly. Yeah. Right. Like there were so many turns when I watched the first two episodes there where even other prosecutors and people on her legal team were like, this still isn't evidence. Yeah. Though. Like at the end of the day, you right. really don't have much of a case. And she was like, yeah, but them thugs. Like right. it's yeah. like And this you, white woman. And this, right, right. Like, this this can't keep put it happening. together. Yeah. Just put it right. together. We got a room full of black kids, white woman who was raped and, and beat and left for dead. Make something happen. Man. Right. And, 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 and you got Donald Trump horrible. stirring the pot. Man, Bro, come on. Taking out an $85,000 ad mm -hmm. to bring back the death penalty. Yeah. And now, fast forward to two decades later, he's president. president. He's not president. Yeah. For the United States. Still hasn't apologized for that. No. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't apologize for anything. Right. The birtherism, none no. of that stuff. No. But there's this idea, and that's why I love the title of it, that when you see black men, <sighs> You Got see it. violence, you see anger, Animal. you see rage. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, think about Birth of a Nation in the oh, 20th century. Right? The, the, the first film, Birth of a Nation with D.W. Griffin. The idea that, that black men are a threat mm -hmm. to society yeah. because of vulnerable white women <sighs> becomes a narrative that, yeah. that, that continues through this case. Mm -hmm. So when you get to 1989 and this is happening, no one is surprised because it's still resonating in our yeah, minds. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody's got to pay for this. Yeah. And, and for me, and I love, and everybody should watch this. The, the fourth. It's super important. It's super important. All four right, parts I'm gonna are important. Yeah. I mean, if you can't, though, don't. Yeah, but I think I should just so I can see the, the brilliance of this film. Yeah. And like, watch yeah. the documentary first. The documentary. They have a PBS documentary about them. Yeah. Watch it first because it provides context right. and you'll have a foundation before you go into this. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Sean is on YouTube. He wants to know will other cases like the Central Park Five come? to light? Mm. Uh, you know, I think there's certain elements for certain cases. Like, had they just gone away and they had not been proven innocent, would we hear about them? I mean, because the system felt like they got it right. And it was only until they got it wrong and we knew that they had it wrong that's when, oh, you're America's darlings. <laughs> right. Oh, I, I'm so, so much sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, oh, what? here's $40 million. Like, That's we, not enough. They took away them kids' innocence. Right. And their like, life. What, and their life. And, and this is why we have to ask ourselves, is punishment, the way we frame it now through the prison, the right way? Big right. picture. And that's what the fourth part of this really yes. speaks to, right? Mm -hmm. is, does this thing function at all? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if, if you keep thinking that, well, we got it right eventually, and if we had only done better police work, it would have right. worked out on the whole, is short-sighted. I think mm -hmm. the big picture is, 
is this whole framework work, you right. know, working? Right. Because this is really scary. And that's why when you got people like Donald Trump fighting for the death penalty, we can't have a death penalty because if those kids had been killed, right? All what? of this would have been then what? For then what? Then their parents would have got forty million dollars. Exactly. They would have right. had a baby. Exactly. Yeah. Like we have to think about this differently, and 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 this film reminds us of that. And as far as other cases, there are so many people right now who are in prison who didn't do it. The Absolutely. Innocence Project estimates yep. that maybe as many as thirty percent of people wow. in prison are innocent. Now, of course, there are people in prison who did it. Yeah. There are people who are rightfully convicted. Right. Mm -hmm. There are people who are wrongfully convicted. Mm -hmm. There are people who are misconvicted. Yes. Like, I might have sold drugs, or I might have been jumping somebody in the park, but I didn't rape anybody. Right. right. And sometimes people feel like, well, if you did something wrong, you should just go to jail for it. And all of those things mixed up means that we have a system that doesn't have right. the moral authority or the accuracy. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to say, I want to make sure that everybody, like, I know that we are watching it, mm -hmm. which yeah. I think is dope. But I want to make sure that like our counterparts who are white and mm -hmm, Asian yes. and, and the people who are actually like on the other side of not understanding why this case meant so much to our communities and what it really did to the black kids walking the streets in New York and really not trusting the, right. the cops at all. Like they already had a little bit of trust issues, but now they really didn't trust it. Like yeah. understanding that, yes, this is affecting us, but looking that, I just want to make sure that the whole community is watching this as a whole. That's a good point. Because yeah. we know. We know. We, we knew this was wrong the whole time. And then people look at you like, oh, oh my God. I didn't know like, that this was Did no Boys oh. in the Hood, I just seen it. I like, just, you know, right, I just exactly. want to make sure that, yeah. while that's a joke, yeah. I absolutely want to make sure that it's not just the strong black leads of you know this world that are watching mm -hmm. it. It's our friends Sarah and Kate in the in the workroom that yeah. are watching it because that's yeah. going to be the difference. Yeah. Well, how do we feel about now that we have this and we have a strong presence with Ava and you know Shonda Rhimes yeah. at Netflix, Regina King, Regina King the Obamas? I feel like now we're it is a pivotal point where we can start telling more of our stories. How do we feel about like these Netflix deals happening I'm amongst excited. black creatives and producers? Shout out man. to Netflix. Shout out to Netflix, they, man. They're no, doing I'm a really excited great job. about Regina King's deal, like you said yes. with the Obama. Yes. I, I want us to tell more stories. I want us to tell diverse stories, mm -hmm. so that like you said, because I, I keep thinking about what you just said, which was really powerful, is that what do white people see when they read this? Because like I had an argument the other day. I right. posted something on my Instagram about uh, a dude running from the police, mm. Mm -hmm. and people are like, "Well, if you're innocent, why are you running?" This is why. Exactly. Right. 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 This is why. But if we can tell that story from our vantage point, with our music, our visions, our art, our visuals rather, all that stuff, I think we can tell different stories. So I want to see more black creatives do this. But that, and when we get the chance to, to to produce our art, I hope we do revolutionary stuff. With Absolutely. It. Not, and not all the time. It's, we can have fun and do other stuff. But we're non monolithic. Right. Yeah. Right. We can do anything. Right. Because we're human. Absolutely. And black. And black. At the same time. Yes. And speaking of things that are black. And human. <laughs> <laughs> um, humans do go to college, and HBCUs yeah. yes. um, are so important. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, I know you're a grad of an HBCU. Yes. Yes. The second oldest HBCU. Come on, man. Uh, Just so you know, there's mad want, tension. Don't even there's want no to tension. Talk you about went, this. You went to Lincoln University. Handed out degrees first. The second oldest That's HBCU. Handed out degrees first. All right, y'all. Look, the yes. point of this. Shout out to Cheney. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> the point Don't of this is stop. that our HBCUs absolutely need yes. more support financially, mm -hmm. making sure that at the end of the day, all these HBCUs that gave us some of our most incredible talents in the world, yes. from the Debbie Allens to the Felicias to every, who else? Jameer Pond. To the Jameer Ponds, to the Mark Lamont Hills, to, to that make sure. <laughs> Why are you that, blinking extra hard, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what, you got just, something in your eye? I mean, you, you with the link, you can say Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah. You, you can say a lot of people. Yeah, I could have said. You said you. I said it last. But anyway, last how show. can we make sure that HBCUs that are suffering and closing and losing accreditation all over this, all over this nation mm -hmm. uh, are being supported? I know as grads, what would you like to see happen? Right. I didn't graduate from Morehouse, but I went. Mm -hmm. And I think I still donate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things we have to do is donate. Wilberforce right now, Wilberforce University is trying to raise $2 million yeah. by June, June 30th. 30th. Yeah. So for me, part of it is donating that money back and yes. saying we can save these schools. I watched Morris Brown close. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. um, it was devastating to watch. I've seen so many close. I think there's another issue here, which is when we say HBCU, we think of Howard, Morehouse, Spelman, Hampton, yeah. sometimes Grambling, sometimes Fam. Fam like, you, know, yeah. you know, we think of like a very small number. Mm -hmm. There's over 100 HBCUs in America. Absolutely. Yeah. And most of us couldn't tell you what Langston University yep. is. Most people don't know about Dell State. Mm -hmm. And so because we don't know those ones, we don't support, we don't, we don't support them. Yeah. We only support the ones that probably need less support. Right. Spelman is doing great. Howard's doing 
better than some of the others. Nothing yeah. great. Right. Yeah, yeah. They have had their financial issues. Yeah, last last year. They all need support, but I'm just saying there's there are some that people don't even know exist. Right. Yeah. And they're doing a lot of the hard, heavy lifting of supporting uh, children who otherwise would be in different educational settings. Right. Yeah. And the great thing about HBCUs is I feel like they really give a chance. Like mm. when I went to Lincoln, we were a part of the largest uh, class of, of that time, at that point in time, uh, of, of freshmen. Because they were giving people a chance. Like I'm talking mm. about people off the street from Philly, New York, Jersey, DC, Baltimore, <laughs> like every. <laughs> 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 but they were, you know, people who didn't have the highest SAT scores, but they gave us a chance. Right. And they, they gave us an opportunity to feel like we, despite our scores, we belong. Mm. And that's the thing about HBCUs. You go there, you feel like you're at home. Mm. It, it's a sense when you learn and about the history, and you walk in those classrooms and, and everything, it's just a sense of you're being home. Right. And we're losing our homes. Mm. Because we don't have the resources. Ex and that's, that's another thing. So, so what, we, we need to be looking for policy solutions. Yeah. We, need the, we need the White House to step in. Oh yeah. Um, and instead of those HBCU leaders stepping into Trump's White House, and taking pictures, mm. we need to be demanding money. Wow. And that's not just a Trump issue, that's a Trump, Obama, Clinton, but all, all the way down the line. Yes. We need money from whoever's in office. Absolutely. We need resources, we need to invest in them. We need to, alumni need to give back, right. Um, right. no matter what. A lot of times black people will have um, an emotional or affective connection to these places. I love my HBCU, I rep my HBCU, but we have to give back the small amounts of money that we have. And again, we, don't, we often don't have the resources because mm -hmm. of the wealth gaps. But we have to give something back. You know, we see the same thing with black Greek letter organizations. We, yeah. we wear the colors, but we don't necessarily, Ooh. we're not necessarily financial. Yep. So we have to be financial, but we also have to have structural investment in these in these things because they save black people's lives. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I didn't even, I mean, I always call myself an unofficial student of yes. Howard University <laughs> because my mom went there. I mean, obviously I grew up in DC, the DC, Maryland area. And so a lot of, a lot of our parents went to Howard, went to the Mecca. My mom's a Delta mm -hmm. from Howard, so I literally grew up on the yard every single yeah. homecoming, went to camps there. And so Howard means so much to me. And But I went to a PWI, I went to Rutgers, mm -hmm. but I would still give back. Like, I think it's really important that we as a community understand that our, there's power in numbers. And even if we didn't, go to those schools, um, there's still support that we can offer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, even on these platforms where we talk about it, like I think yeah. it's more important that everybody just is a little bit more aware. And even if it's $25 a month, yeah. that's still so Oh, it matters. Right, like if 25,000 people gave $25 a month. I just, I just want to make one point, you've made an amazing point. And I just want to make one point that even if you went to a PWI, I don't think there should be a riff. I see it all the time on Twitter. You ain't yes. go to a real school. Because, you know, y'all barely accredited. And we're talking about other black people talking about black people that went to HBCUs and yeah. it's this whole thing. What? So, yeah. It's a HBCU versus PWI, you know. Yeah, you, I don't like that. Judge. I don't like that either because it shows separation. That's like, so if I went to a PWI and I knew that Howard or Hampton or Lincoln or whatever was in trouble, I would try to get financial help because I understand how important that is to my community. Absolutely. It, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, the, that's what people don't understand. Like, some, a lot of people don't have an understanding of what the work that HBCUs do. Yep. And they say stuff like, oh, well, it doesn't prepare you for the real world, you know. But when you at white ass How Harvard yeah. or Yale with 10 black people right. in your class instead of, you know, 10,000, no one says that's not the real world, yeah. right? Exactly. You know, yeah. you don't, you're not surrounded by billionaires all the time. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, but, but, but those unreal circumstances are acceptable. But being at HBCU where you get a sense of pride, where you get to see black people who look like you, that's why I encourage black people to teach at an HBCU, mm -hmm. at least for some point in time. I encourage artists mm -hmm. who show up, or us, like when, when, when y'all book Jameer and, and Gia to, to, you know, do stuff on, on, on campuses, like we give HBCU discounts. Right. We, we can't do it for free, but we give HBCU yeah. discounts. Absolutely. And, and these kinds of things matter. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if we all support it, regardless of whether we went to one or not, we can help the community because the community needs that. You know what I mean? Uh, can I change gears though? Because there's something that Jameer needs to get off his chest. I don't even know what it is. Okay, come on, HBCU. But it, I don't know what it is, but it's probably gonna be weird and wrong. Uh. So what we did was, <laughs> we came up with a segment, okay? Because everybody has a lot of opinions at Black Coffee. Me, Gia, Jameer, and all y'all out there. And sometimes you just gotta get that thing off your chest. You gotta do it without interruption. So we're gonna play something called I said what I said, where people get to say what they think, they get 30 seconds to make their best argument for whatever they got on their mind, and we don't even know what it's gonna be, and then they'll respond to it. So Jameer, I don't know what you're gonna say, right. but you got 30 seconds to make the okay. case. Okay, are we ready? Okay, Let's do got it. a serious face on. He's real life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, nice to meet oh, you. Oh, God. Thousands 
of people a year. Okay have this impression that the Fresh Prince is better than Martin. Now, I'm not blaming these people, but I think they're ignorant. Martin is clearly the better show. It's the funnier show. If there was a marathon on BET, which it probably is, Martin would be the most watched. People always applaud Will Smith of his character, Will Smith, and in that pivotal scene with his father. I thought that was beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. But I have never seen anybody act like they miss their CD player more than Martin when he dressed up as Nino Brown, and I get emotional sometimes. <laughs> when he dressed up as Nino Brown and had the fake dog, he committed, he was strong, that dog, uh, he was talented, he was brilliant. Martin is better than the Fresh Prince. Thank you. You made it, I'm not clapping for that shit. Thank you. Did you, did, did Thank you? Thank you. Gia. Thank Are you, you. Gia. Give me some. Come on. Gia. And we got that. Well, you know, that, I right? am biased yeah. completely. I love Martin. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. It's incredible. I didn't realize when growing up that the reason why I loved Martin Lawrence so much is because he it was so familiar to me because he was from the DMV. Yeah. So like his voice, his accent, like everything. I'm like, oh, I'm watching my cousins and they and that funny. And then all right, also, so basically you'll go with anything if it's from DC. Absolutely. Because you about to go with excuse with me. The what are you about friends? Because it's Philly. Right. What are you saying to me? West Philadelphia. I love the DMV. Oh, oh he was from Philly, wasn't he? We can I, put I, I, I didn't, you, I didn't remember. I didn't put that together. I didn't know. I got you. I didn't. I didn't. All right. So why why y'all looking like y'all? Wow. And we just want to know what I, the I thought we were a team. Square we are. I like you very much. You're All a great right, so person. Yeah. The best of Martin Martin's better. is really good. Right? E I mean, first of all, we're talking about more pivotal moments. We're talking about elite people. This is like LeBron versus Kobe type right, stuff. Right, right, right. Right. So, like, versus boys to men. Everybody's so, great. <laughs> I'm not, you're trying to take me down a very evil rabbit hole. I hate everything you stand for. Um, no, this is what I'm saying. But it, Martin faded at the end. Gina okay. and Martin weren't even in the same room half the time. Okay. Yeah, I get that. Right. There's no better moment. That's why he don't want me mad. There's yeah. nothing better than that. But as far as comedy, Martin episodes are way more memorable and historic than The Fresh Prince. And that's a fact. Yeah, but, but you said a better show. You didn't say a funnier show. If you say uh, Martin better. is funnier, it maybe. Is com it's situation comedies. What are we basing it off? The title? Oh, well, the ti Fresh Prince title's better. Fresh Prince theme song is better. Home to Bel Air. Okay, what the, about the humor? If you go anywhere in the world right now and say West Philadelphia, everybody knows you're the right. song. You're right. Don't we can't say no more, so we'll get sued. I know. I right. That's it. That's it. it. You, you do a dance. <laughs> you do a dance. All right. Cool. <laughs> if you look, at <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Phil's the best TV dad That's, ever. Who was, else ro rolled up in the pool hall and got his son's money back? That okay, is true. Okay, but guys, this was two different situations. Martin though. played twelve characters, all memorable. That's because yeah, they had no all budget. Of them. Was, First of all, they had no Martin budget. was a comedic genius. Yes, he was. And he wrote every single one of those sketches, and was absolutely committed on, to man. doing that. And this was his dream opportunity from all his times with Spike and every every other movie he did, Boomerang, like. Instant he wanted natural. this. He so was also I an think, instant natural. I think that at the end of the day, what they are is two different shows. This was Will Smith's coming of age representation of a kid who moved from West Philly, a teenage coming of age story. He was adorable. He was well, in high school. Me, and Stop. we want. That's always out. gonna be the. I'm sorry. Stop it. And Martin was grown, getting his life together. Yeah. He was late twenties. He was meeting his bae. Him and Gina are forever relationship goals. Radio personality. Pam, great. TV. Radio personality. It's two different situations. I just love Martin. Like, I love Martin. Varnell Hill, Jodeci. Boing, boing. Yeah, you better say something good about Jodeci. I love Jodeci. Oh, you're well, this is a friend. I never didn't like Jodeci. Yeah, you're not doing news. this to me. Look, Maya breaking on YouTube. News. Yeah. Uh, do, oh, I'm sorry. Did I, we already? Did, oh, I'm sorry, Maya. Do we skip Maya? We gotta say Maya on YouTube now. She there? Come back. Bring back Maya on YouTube. Yeah, Maya. Bring it back. We bring love it back. You. Bring it back. All right. Who do you think will be the next rapper to become a billionaire? That's an easy one. Puffy. Yeah. Okay. Diddy. We all say Diddy? Diddy, Diddy yeah. for sure. We all say Diddy? Yeah. All right. See, that was easy. Thank you, Maya. All right, y'all. We got the roll, but we will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. for more Black Coffee. Make sure you watch us right here at 10 a.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and every place else. But we're not going anywhere right now because we have Black Coffee, the refill, yes. on Twitter. Stay with us.